So what are the necessities of the Christian faith? Well, that's what we're exploring in this series. And this is already the fifth part in which we will look at what we believe about the fall of mankind. You can go to my website or one of my video channels to see the, all the other parts and I will put the links in the description of this video. Without further ado, let's start this new part. We've arrived at number 36 and I've called this one Sin can be seen as failing to meet God's standards for us. This failure isn't just a mistake, it's a choice to turn away from God's glory on purpose. While we often think of sin as not living up to God's expectations, we need to understand that this is a conscious decision. We miss the mark when we in, uh, intentionally ignore what God wants for us. Number 37. Sin as crossing boundaries. When we cross the boundary, we are basically uh, transgressors. Uh, transgression means to cross over or to go beyond and is often linked to breaking God's clear commands. When God gives a specific instruction, like for example he did with Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden, and that instruction is ignored, a transgression occurs. In this way, sin is say, seen as breaking the law. Let's read Romans 5 verse 14. Nevertheless, death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over them that had not sinned after the similitude of Adam's transgression. That means that even though we didn't uh, sin in the exact same way as Adam, we still sinned. Then we come to number 38, sin as deviance. The Bible shows that people are responsible and that they must respond with faith and obedience to God's message. Therefore, sin is often described as defiance against God, who is, well, not basically, who is the Most High. Let's read Isaiah chapter 1, verse 2. Hear, O heavens, and give ear, O earth, for the Lord hath spoken. I have nourished and brought up children, and they have rebelled against me. So in this view, sin is a personal and intentional act of disobedience, a refusal to submit to the one who created us. Number 39, sin as selfishness. So when we sin, we basically act out of, selfish, uh, out of a selfish mindset, believing that our choices will bring us much more happiness than following God. Sin shows our tendency to focus inward on ourselves, which is basically the opposite of love. Love looks outward, uh, prioritizing others and recognizing uh, the importance of other people. Let's read Philippians 2 verse 3. Let nothing be done through strife or vainglory, but in lowliness of mind let each esteem other better than themselves. While sin seeks personal pleasure and satisfaction, love actually aims to bring joy to others, hoping to make the other more happy in God. Let's go to number 40, sin as idolatry. Now, sin is not just about actions like lying or stealing, it also involves the, the heart. The, the vis visible acts of sin come from what is inside a person. We can read that in Matthew 15, for example. In the Bible, idolatry often means worshipping uh, physical objects uh, instead of God. However, it can also appear in a more subtle way, uh, like seeking approval or seeking security, power or even pleasure. We can identify the idolatry in our hearts by looking at where our desires have turned into demands. Let's read James chapter 4, verse 1 and 2. From whence come wars and fighting among you? Come they not hence, even of your lusts that war in your members? Ye lust and have not, ye kill and desire to have and cannot obtain. Ye fight and war, yet ye have not, because ye ask not. Number 41. Sin and Death. The final result of sin is death, and this includes physical, spiritual, and eternal death. 
For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. So God already warned Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden that eating from the tree of knowledge would lead to death. The death from the fall was not just physical, it also meant spiritual death, which is separation from God. And this spiritual death continues forever for those who die without the reconciliation offered by Christ, who overcame death through his own death and resurrection. And then we go to number 42, the impact of sin in this world. You see, sin affects not just our own uh, bond with God, but it also causes harm to our relationships with others. The, the sinfulness of humanity is why creation longs for uh, redemption and freedom from evil influence, uh, influences. Um, sin has tainted and um, altered the social systems, resulting in injustice and oppression. We can see the harmful effects of sin basically everywhere. But the good news is that Christ will ultimately triumph over these forces when he returns. Then we go to number 43, bound by sin. So due to Adam and Eve's fall in the Garden of Eden, all people have inherited a nature that leans towards sin and rebellion. Humanity is basically trapped in sin, constantly tempted to break God's laws. It is only through salvation in Christ that one can break free from this bondage, empowered by the Holy Spirit. We read Romans 8 verse 2. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus have set me free from the law of sin and death. Number 44. Temptation versus sin. Uh, I think it's very important to understand that temptation is absolutely not the same as sin. Temptation can involve natural desires that become twisted, focusing on self-gratification uh, instead of honoring God. Jesus faced temptation like we do. Uh, we can read that, for example, in Matthew 4. But Jesus never have sinned. He resisted temptations and followed his Father's will. Aware of our weakness, we must stay alert to temptations that could lead us to sin and ask God to protect us from evil, like we um, read in the Lord's Prayer, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Then we go to number 45, guilt and shame. Guilt means be, uh, being found responsible for wrongdoing, or for a wrongdoing and facing the punishment that follows. Let's read James 2 verse 10. For whosoever shall keep the whole law and yet offend in one point, he is guilty of all. Now shame is the emotional hurt that arises from sinful behavior. The, the Bible teaches that people are objectively guilty and also experience the subjective feeling of shame. Shame first appears in the Bible when Adam and Eve ate the fruit in Genesis 3. At first everything was perfect, just as God wanted, and then sin entered the world, bringing shame that pushes them, Adam and Eve, uh, away from harmony into uh, loneliness. Adam and Eve hid because of their shame. Now we can experience this as well, but thank God we can confess our sins and know that he will take our sh shame away. Let's read Romans 10 verse 11 to 13. For the scripture saith, Whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed, for there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek. For the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And this is the last uh, point of this part, the world opposed to God. In the Bible, the term world sometimes means that more than just the earth of, or all the people. Uh, often um, it describes a powerful and evil spiritual force that opposes God and his kingdom. This evil force is 
under Satan's influence. We read this in Ephesians 2 and John 14. And it shows the same selfishness and deceit found in him, in Satan. This is why you, uh, you may have heard Christians uh, who talked about their, for example, their worldly desires. They are referring to this evil idea of um, the world that is ruled under Satan. Christians are encouraged to overcome this spiritual evil through their faith in the Son of God, in Jesus. Let's read the first letter uh, of John, chapter 5, verse 4 and 5. Every child of God can defeat the world and our faith is what gives us this victory. No one can defeat the world without having faith in Jesus as the Son of God. So this was the fifth part of this series already and I hope it will help you to understand Christianity even better and that this series will encourage you in your faith. More is to come soon. Um, in the next part we're gonna talk about redemption that's going to be a very long video so stay tuned you can subscribe to my channel to receive an update when i post that video as well and remember i'm not only active on uh, youtube but you can also find me on odyssey bitshoot and rumble you can check the description of this video to find out how you can support me and i also post a link there to both the dutch and the english transcripts of this video so if you like you can read it again at your own leisure and finally, um, in the same description, you'll find uh, a link to all my other channels on social media. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. And let's close together with the words from uh, 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 2. Grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. Amen. Thank you for watching this video. You can give me a thumbs up if you liked it. You can also subscribe to my channel or even better, follow me on Odyssey. That way you will never miss a new video. You will find all the links in the description below.